side of the His name is John. Mine too. That's me in there. No, not the craning one, cradling a bubble of baby, wound in a weightless halo. Not the babe either, tilted in that man's wire basket hands, as if he were a brandy glass held to the light. Not the woman wailing in wonderment, arms outstretched like a safety net. Not the harlequin lion, and neither the white dove above or the blood lamb below, but that crimson wisp of oyster-eyed whirl at the hands clenched woman's hip. That's me. That's me. An electric coil, live but passively neutral, and in a maelstrom of heaven-bent necks, defiantly earth. So I guess this was a point uh, in which uh, I didn't realise it at the time, but I think I was already driving a stake into the ground and, uh, and, and uh, emphatically stating my religious standpoint, or lack of, in, in, in saying this defiantly earth. Um, one of the books that I showed you, this one, Songs in Waiting, by Paul Gordon Chandler, has some of um, Daniel's uh, paintings in here, lovely colour plates of them. And he sent me a copy of this book with a lovely dedication. And, um, and in, in, in them, there's only three or four of his paintings in here, but he explains the reasoning behind the paintings. And, and I, I wouldn't look at any of these because I didn't want to be informed, and he didn't want me to be informed either. And I have to say at this point, um, when I was writing the book, I didn't know who John was. I guessed it was John the Baptist, um, but I didn't know that. Um, a person who was great help to me throughout this project was Annabelle, who was in the audience tonight, who, um, who either knew um, the reference points of some of, these, uh, of some of these images, or knew where to look for them. And she very quickly uh, pointed me in the right direction for this one, and that made me just tweak the other bit in the poem. Um, the painting itself, now I read Daniel's description of it, um, says he was, uh, he was rather influenced by Marc Chagall, I can see that. Yeah, and um, it was a Russian Jewish artist and uh, an American Jewish artist, Ben Shaw, who I know nothing of. And if we could move to the next painting, please. Okay, the cross is probably Daniel Bonnell's most uh, regularly used motif. Um, sometimes I used his titles. Um, as in the last poem, sometimes I came up with my own title. Uh, this uh, Red Crucifixion, I used his title, very, very short. Pity this man, naked, raked red, pinned against a lashed sky. Pity this sky, flayed, shredded, beaten, black and blue. Pity this pose, hung like a failed star beneath the star of his people, a promise of life everlasting, hatching in a gold nest of thorns. We have the next one, please? How strange is that? <laughs> <laughs> I think what you will see, hopefully, throughout um, all these images, just how varied um, uh, Daniel's technique is and his style. Um, this is called The Shadow of the Crucifixion. There was no point looking to the Bible for this one, was there? there, there you know, at times I would see um, uh, paintings uh, of, say, Good Samaritan, and I could remember Sunday School, and I could remember that, and I would look back at, uh, and I would look up, I would, I would study. What, what, what shocked me, um, well, not shocked me, surprised me, I guess, about so many of the stories that I remembered from the Bible is in turning to them, is how little they occupy in the Gospels. Maybe two or three lines can encompass the whole story sometimes. Um, but they did remind me sometimes of, um, of what was behind these. Uh, clearly, in this case, um, this was just left to the imagination. And I think I was still at this point. Um, there was an edginess to the poems, I think, at this point. But, um, I'll, talk, I'll talk a little bit about, more about that later. The Shadow of the Crucifixion. Christ knows what the joke is. Nobody else does. Certainly not we, behind the pasty-faced masks, the gashed and gurning grins, all blob noses and piano key eyes. Nobody gets it. No one really laughs. The fault's all his, 
The way it was told, the timing, delivery, that unfunny punchline about dying for our sins. What could we be but embarrassed? Hide behind lolly stick clowns, let the gag fall flat on their faces. What other choice could we make but to leave it to them to see the funny side? Appreciate this sick joke, this gallows humour. start again. <laughs> Dear Richard, make sure you can see the paintings. There's this room on the front row here. <laughs> Everybody's going to be cursing who sat behind Richard here. <laughs> okay, um, shall we move to the next painting please? By the way, I've no, I've not a clue how this is going to run for timing. I, I made one or two notes, as I say, uh, one or two I've quoted verbatim from the email exchanges I had with Daniel Ball. Um, but I did, I'm not good at reading from notes. I'd rather just improvise. And um, so I'm not quite sure how long all this will take. If, if I'm overrunning, I will skip paintings. If I can do them all, I will. And uh, I think we're due to finish about quarter to nine in about three quarters of an hour. I'd like to leave some time for questions if possible, so um, we'll, we'll plough on. This is a Madonna and Child. After the bloodless union of virgin and ghost, having woken and broken to the truth of the news blown in on a gust of angel wings, having been cursed with the seed of a blessing, she carries the burden inside to the wary eyes of one dusted with shavings, lets the secret carry itself outside. And she's on trial in the tuts and looks. She's on trial in the glances and gossip and behind hands proclaimed guilty before God. Still, her husband chisels and carves a haven for the day she'll stand quite still with the weight of the world in her arms, the tip of each infant finger sweet as a fig in her lips. Move to another one. Thank you. So a lot of crucifixion pictures. Um, I think this one, yes, this one occupies the cover of Tom Wright's book. Tom Wright is the Bishop of Durham. So quite short these poems. Um, Last shapes of Christ. Um, that wasn't Daniel's title. Um, what was Daniel's title? Um, crucifixion. Uh, Daniel changes titles all the time. It's amazing. Every time I write to him again, I find, I find his painting had got a new title. Uh, anyway, I call it Last Shapes of Christ. And Son, of course, is S-O-N in this case. The sun's day done, and done early. He sets at the widest point, where he's yoked to a crossbeam, head already sunk below the shoulder's horizon. He's a thumbtack driven into the softest part of the day, before the six o'clock yellow turns black. He is a still top, stuck steady whilst the world spins, a thorn garlanded by smaller thorns. He is a drip feed, hung high, from which solace will be leached, the spirit slaked, salvation assured. And the next one, please. Jairus' daughter. Um, the, the images I had, and the ones I'm looking at here and that I printed off from the website, um, these are uh, high resolution images. Still, of course, will be some uh, degree down from the, the actual paintings. Um, but um, I see already um, detail in these that uh, you know, I couldn't really see very well. I really had to strain to see. We have the child here um, that Jesus is healing. I knew nothing of this story. I don't know if I, I'm sure uh, those of you who are students of the Bible or, or uh, of the Christian faith will, will have a lot more knowledge of all this than me. Um, but anyway, Jairus' daughter, I think again, Annabelle may be of a help in this one. What slick trickery is this? 
What sorcery? Outside, in the heave and heat of crowd, a healed woman, twelve years bad blood staunched, goes in peace. And inside, this. A twelve-year-old hand, grown cold, unstiffens in his and unpeels the murky, muted air, finger by uncoiling finger, until its palm pulses with light. He lifts his eyes, puts food to her lips, his finger to his own. Leaves as he entered, the curious seek word. Nothing but life leaks out. And this is one of the things that was surprising me when I was reading the, uh, uh, the Gospels. Um, I have dipped into them uh, over the years from time to time anyway, and, and, and things in the Bible. Um, but uh, reading them uh, thoroughly again, and also you know, uh, turning to them for occasionally information about what I was seeing in some of these... Uh, in some of these paintings. Obviously this was called Jairus' daughter, so I had to find out who that was. Um, it was this curious thing, wasn't it, that whenever Jesus um, uh, conducted a miracle of some kind, it was, don't tell anyone. So, um, I find that really interesting. We move on to the next one. Thank you. Short poem, very short poem. Uh, again, Daniel's title, The Beauty of the Cross. You are a stick of a man in a Vincent vexed <coughs> dusk. You are a shadow of a man lit by the sun's lava. You are a mirage of a man imagined through hot tempest. Mirage man, shadow man, stick man, stiffen your resolve, flex your pipe cleaner limbs. Unforsaken, ride out your pain against the Catherine Wheel sky. We've got communication going here, it's really good. Isn't it? <laughs> Just a glance, now he's doing this. <laughs> um, okay. Um, Jesus wept, which uh, my, my dad never tired of telling me is it the, the shortest sentence in the Bible, I don't know if that's true. Uh, can't be much shorter, I guess. Um, the, the point, I think, where he's, um, he's arriving to minister help to Lazarus and here's the news that Lazarus has died. Um, I've used Daniel's title, Jesus wept. Jesus wept, but the banks of the Tigris held. River Jordan did not swell, nor the heavens open. With a small and private grief, too late, too late, that marks a mortal man, Jesus wept. But Galilee's lake did not rise, the sea did not come in, the desert stayed dry. The short and simple truth is, Jesus wept, with no grand show. That came later. We are sure of that, sure as dead men walk, sure as tears run backwards. So again, we're getting some of the uh, atheism creeping through at the end there, and the, the, the disbelief, I guess. I'll say a little bit more about that in, in, in a second, uh, when I reach an, an appropriate poem, I think. I think the next one's The Upside Down Sunset. A very strange uh, title. It's such a good title, again, I used it for the poem. The Upside Down Sunset. At sunset, a new dawn. Logic has no place here. God shakes the stubborn world, blizzards the bowl and settles it. A ripped man, unpinned, turns on the wood like an hourglass. Drained faith once again fills his mouth. Graves empty theirs. Three days later, a stone shifts at the shove of two ruined wrists. Light quits the tomb, masters a man, stepping into an upturned world, righted. So I say, some of these poems taking on the uh, stance of, of a believer. So I, know, I never see that, maybe, maybe you may disagree some of you, I never see that as a hypocritical thing to do. To me, it's always about the poem. It's always about whether the poem is true, not whether there's truth um, in, in the person who's writing it. That goes for other people, as far as me. Um, okay. Um, 
bit of a story to this one. This was the one that um, Joan was remarking on that, um, that won the um, International Religious Poetry Competition. Um, obviously, I, I needed to send a poem that, that would work um, without the painting. I was, I was very surprised uh, to win. And I think, I think um, it shows the broad-mindedness of the uh, committee as well when, when uh, you see some of the language in this. And um, a friend of mine who's a Roman Catholic said I'd never got away with this with the Roman Catholic Church. I don't know, I don't know quite why that is. But um, uh, the, the painting's enunciation, and so is the poem, of course, as a Gabriel, the angel of the Lord, coming down with the news that uh, Mary is about to give birth to the Messiah. What news that must have been. Here we go. You come with your bad news ticking in your mouth. Fan the giant brag of your wings. Open your nothing up my sleeve hands and magic her a gift that must be paid for. You find her where she'd not be found, in the shadow of betrothal. Declare her the chosen vessel for the chosen one, and lodge a weight in her womb that grows like rumour. Ever after, she might tell this tale, truthfully, sheepishly, to all who listen. How feathers fell from the sky in the shape of a man, how he spoke a seed into her unopened sex, how, after the gentlest, most shocking of rapes, he left the scene of the crime, letting the white light of witchcraft confess down on her from above. When I, um, I, had, a, I had a lovely day there um, at, at, the, uh, at the cathedral uh, when it was the prize giving, and um, Callan Shanks, a uh, wonderful man, um, was uh, officiating, and uh, they got each person up to read the poem. They had the, uh, the highly commended and the third, second prize. And uh, it was, uh, it was on, um, I think it was a midday, uh, midweek, sorry, afternoon, and it was a glorious day. The sun was streaming through the church windows. And the moments I got up to read went very black. <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> Okay, uh, right over there. Um, this gave me a lot of trouble. Um, it's called Woman at the Well. Um, I won't retell the story, some of you may know it anyway. I think it's, um, it's in John. Um, and it's, um, I don't know why this poem gave me so much trouble, but it, it, it seems to take an awfully long time to write. Woman at the Well, go down deep enough and something will be found and fetched up. Around the mouth of the well, they exchange thirst. He tells his parched tale, she hers. His speech makes a small orbit of interrogation without trial. Not much else is heard or said. But in the quiet air of revelation, the knock of her risen heart in the well of her breast ascends like a hold pale, brimming with faith fulfilled. She's a quenched soul, rippling away to tell others, returns as a wave, breaking on his shore. Could we next? Thank you. Um, Jesus the Boy is the title of this, um, and the title of the poem, the painting and the poem. Um, surprisingly little about Jesus as a boy in the Bible that I could find anyway in the Gospels. Um, Luke is the only one, I think, who, who, who deals with, with this. Um, I stand corrected, if, if anyone knows, knows better on that. But um, there's the story of, uh, of Jesus uh, running away from his parents, or at least disappearing for a little while, and going to the, uh, to the temple. I think when he returns, he's asked, uh, where have you been? And he says, I've been with my father. Um, and I think he was about, was he about 12, I think, when this happened. I'm getting some noise here, so I hope that's a, <laughs> affirmative. Um, yeah, as, as I say, I think uh, I think it was just uh, just Luke who mentions this. Um, so very little to go on for, for Jesus, the boy in the Bible. So again, just uh, to the imagination, and uh, the uh, we see um, 
See the bird dove there? I think representing God. Um, that features in a lot of uh, Daniel's paintings, so does the moon. Here we go, Jesus the boy. Just like any other boy, really. Moody, blue as a bird, moonstruck, hunched against the future, dumbstruck, back turned to expectation. He's a lone seed, stilled before harvest. He's an olive, rolled away from the grove. He's ripe as a plum, raw as dawn, one hand wet with inarticulate weeping, the other picking at an earth not yet understood. Just like any other boy, really. Just like any other normal, healthy, innocent, average, typical, green as grass, fresh as a daisy, bog-standard, run-of-the-mill, common or garden, son of God. <laughs> perhaps I'll just break for a minute there to say that um, we have the, the next one up, but that's okay. Uh, lovely, lovely painting to look at. It's one of my favourites. So, a good point to pay. I, I should mention something. Blood badges us, badges him. Cross hatched arms burned by a blood red sun turned blue. He wears his meshed wounds like medals for mercy, his weeping arms of sodden gauze like striped wings, tethered, and below his head, thankfully, mercifully out of frame, his ribs ladder down to mortal man's genitals, the uncracked plates of his shin bones, the fan of his foot bones, spidering to the toes poor platform. He's poised for that last leap of faith, fueled by a belief that badges us, Begs our belief, beggars belief. To his side, a soon blooded spear held heavenwards, points the way home. So I suppose that's a poem uh, which is uh, as much about what's out of frame as what's in it. Um, I'm keeping an eye on the time, and uh, moving into volume two, which isn't quite as long. Uh, the painting I love, no, I don't know what this is about. Um, he called it uh, a flock of 27 blue doves. I'm not trying to count them, but I, I've called it 27 blue doves. And for those from the poetry classes, you recognise the sonnet, will not you? <laughs> 27 blue doves. When God takes to the air in such numbers, it's difficult to get doubt off the ground. These vivid spirits cut loose and clamber up the sky, steal its blue, its vast surrounds. No sun melts this mosaic, tears this veil of feathers. All is talon, beak and wing, all is show and spectacle. When assailed by such overwhelming odds, smothering the light, shadowing the earth, lending shrill sermons to the air, what chance argument, what hope reason beneath such overkill? beneath such frenzied, nagging testament. Whilst these doves cry blasphemy, foul, treason, we load our guns with doubt, shout, God's in season. <coughs> His title, The Crossing Minds Walking on Water. A dismal miracle at best, Split from blinkered man, he adopts a widower's walk, bisects a sunset and before a torrid sky, come all as his destiny on the wounded skin of the lake. Beneath the burnt swell, beneath his skater's feet, the cyclists go about their directionless business, and above, in his wake, he signs his death warrant, inscribes his part of the bargain in the colours of a skull. Behind him, two chalked tracks, crossed like pale and separate arms in a blood pact. Ahead, a reef called Calvary. Head bowed, he sets his steady compass. Uh, Mary's pondering. Beneath the cradling hand, the blue robe, the newborn and the full breast, how much can the chambers of the heart contain? Beneath the sweat, Hair and the calmed brow, how much can the mind hold? Each fills, the one fast beating with life's shock, the other turning slow as the seasons. 
She wears God's given halo as if she were the earth, the whole brown capped earth lit by risen sun. She tastes her held miracle to be sure it is real. A suspended God pretend warm and white as mother's milk is a guest at love's feast. A wine glass glows the shadow of a future waiting to be drunk. And in the wine glass, I think we see the image of the crucifixion, if you can make that out. Uh, have we missed one? No, I, 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 it's me going wrong. Uh, such is the kingdom. Um, this is one I wrote two poems for. I wrote a poem called Gates of Heaven, Gates of Hell about this painting because I haven't got a clue what was going on here. And again, Annabelle um, was the one who spotted these children at the bottom here. It was a, it was a much more blurred um, image on the one I was looking at and that she was looking at. Um, and then tracked it down into that Bible reference of uh, suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for if such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall in no wise enter in. Which I think is from Mark. Um, so once I knew that, I, uh, I, I'd already sent the um, original poem to Daniel and then said, um, no, this, this is the one now. <laughs> I understand. I think I understand. Such is the kingdom. When that last nick of light we'll see is no more than the wink of a needle's eye opening to us once in a closing sky. It will not have been poverty, shrinking or shape-shifting that saves us, but last chance wanderings into our infant heads. In the clamour of these soon spectres, where arms flail and hearts fail, in the bustle and jostle, the pull and the push, only the child and the childlike will slip through. Heaven lays us down the cord for the reborn. We reach out with hands, small as petals, hearts, big as blooms, eyes whose summers are in single figures. Joseph's bird lesson, and I'd, I'd be very interested in hearing from anyone afterwards who knows what this is about. I haven't a clue. Um, and so what, what I sometimes do with poems when I, uh, I don't, um, or with subjects that I don't fully understand is I, 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 I either make it up <laughs> or I, uh, I open up and, and confess I don't understand, which is what I've done here. Joseph's bird lesson. Joseph's bird lesson falls on deaf ears. My deaf ears. He soars to opera, motions to God, spirit, messenger, but his words fall flat. His ward mirrors his pose, motions too. They glide as one, extend their arms like wings, but Joseph's bird lesson falls on stony ground. He's grounded in a dull brain, my dull brain. I grasp none of this, get none of it, see nothing but figures weightless as shadows and colours rich as metaphor. And these birds, are they ravens or doves, portents or peace? Does the boy balance a flock or a trinity on the palm of his wingtip? And, but this light, my God, this light, who wouldn't want to grasp that? Who could be indifferent enough not to force an ear to the canvas, strain to hear every word? Um, feeding of the 5,000. I'm going to skip one or two soon, I think, and I may skip this one, I think. Could we move on? So, definitely one of my favourite paintings of Daniel's. Um, Resurrection of the Christ, I just call it Resurrection. So, behold the clinching trick, the mortal coil not so much sloughed off as electrified. Unsnagged by nail or thorn, he thrums with fiery charge. An angel lands, sparking on shaking ground, trembles the sentries and jump starts the dead. To some, more than just day begins to dawn. And do we dream this burning sprite, this rolled stone, these bewildered women, the multitude drank their eyes on the rags of rumour? The air fizzes with possibilities. A man of spent breath 
abroad in an electric dawn, broken bread body mended, wine coloured blood unspilled. The Devil's Moment. Again, Daniel's title. The Devil's Moment corrupts the pupil, blinds the teacher, starves the poor and feeds the richer, fuels the fear of the strange or foreign, orphans the child, widows the woman, glides and goes through airport check-ins, bloods the hills as landscape blackens, spins soft-nosed from white hot barrels, sprouts full-grown war from seeds of quarrels. It is the dove cowered by hawks, the package through the letterbox, the lie in the paper, the strike of the viper, the blade in the playground, the storm in the background, the huddled, hooded crowd of grief, death's bent armed shadow from the tree of life. Raising Lazarus, half claimed in the half light, he's a still warm sliver in a split shell cooling. He hangs a pendant scar in an unstitched wound, a teardrop unsplashed, a soul not yet risen. Very soon, a weeping man with magic in his mouth will hook his thumbs into a drawing veil and tear. Death's shredded threads will give as the dark ruptures, and behold, more than the walking wounded made well will be witnessed. The given up and gone, the doornail dead will be drawn out and driven into being, hammered home by God's right hand. Uh, Via Dolorosa um, is the is Daniel's title, and I, I used it. I was thinking of Via, Via, the way. Um, I think the Latin is a way of grief or a way of suffering. Um, the English, I should say, of the Latin via Dolorosa. Um, yet another, obviously, crucifixion poem. Um, I, I never thought I'd, I'd write so many, uh, painting, I should say, never thought I'd write so many poems about the crucifixion. I decided to do this one, um, uh, thinking of that fire in the way of maybe thinking of the 12 stations of the cross, uh, Jesus um, sending to Golgotha, the place of the skull. Via Dolorosa. Via ablution and torture, via crossbeam and thorn, via tiredness and totter, via wordless compassion, via shifting of burden, via blood, sweat and icon, via weakness and tumble, via women and weeping, via stagger and stumble, via shame and exposure, via rope, nail and hammer, we arrive here. The journey's end. Ask the question mark Christ, Black scratched and scored, who hangs at his station, forsaken, mistaken, or saved. We have um, the next one, we've got it. Um, the Seeing Shepherds.